January 9th, I departed on my trip to Florida. I had to say goodbye to my daughter's two dogs. So we had some snow, but this was the only break in the weather I could find to make it down there. Hey, fun police. Stop the growling. I'm ready to leave here, but I wanted to show you where you hook up your safety chains and your camper lights. So this is much improved from my 2020 Model X. They're much easier to get to. They were up higher and hard to connect. Here's the other side, the left side, the plug and the other safety chain connector. I'm on my way. It's about 10.30 Sunday. Heading to Florida. Before I left, I did some testing. Going 65, 70 miles an hour, I use about 330 to 340 watt hours per mile. So, when you look at how many watt hours per mile I use each segment of this journey, keep that in mind. If you wanted to get the advertised range of this, which is about 350 miles, 100 kilowatt hours so it works out to be about 285 watt hours per mile but even without a trailer you don't achieve that so here it's even worse you have to factor in elevation changes too because it works really hard going up those hills but uh, here in Breezewood PA I had to drop my camper there's just no easy way to pull in and not block traffic. I think for this whole trip I only had to drop my camper three times to get down to Jupiter, Florida. Jupiter, Florida. Here in Hagerstown, Maryland, you can see I did better with my watt hours per mile at 606 compared to that last leg. You can see there's a big variance, so you have to Plan for the worst case scenario uh, when you're towing a camper. So I always left a large buffer. What's missing here? No windshield wiper fluid. So it's going to be a long trip home if the weather's not cooperating because I'll have to stop a lot to clean my windshield. But I wanted to show you one other thing. And when you first plug in your camper or trailer, you can see in the upper left it's blue. When I try to engage autopilot, it says it's temporarily not available. But if you turn trailer mode off, the trailer now is amber on your screen. And you can see that I engage auto steer, no problem. In Gaithersburg, Maryland, it was a challenge to get supercharged because I'd never traveled this route before. And when I got there, well, on the Tesla map, it looks like it's out in a parking lot. You can see a number three. Well, it's a parking garage. So I had to drop my trailer, but I was already pulling into the garage. It's a one lane area, so I had to back up to get it there. But I did get supercharged and got hooked up again. And you can see there was only seven foot of clearance and my teardrop trailer is a little taller than that. Then I went on to Stafford, Virginia and did a lot better, 549 watt hours per mile. Still raining. I ended up dropping my trailer at the Holiday Inn. This supercharger is at a Wawa. But I got an alert because I put my blink camera on the front and back of the trailer when I have to leave it. So that if anyone messes with it, I get an alert. I went across the road. There was a Target parking lot. It was getting late. So I just boondocked there for the night and continued my journey in the morning. So I'm going to average... 
all of my watt hours per mile and see how I did on day one. As a reminder, I stopped at many more superchargers than I needed to. I figured I'd document where they're at and what capabilities you have to supercharge with your camper attached. But at the end of day one, I had expended 3,189 watt hours, which averages out to about 637 watt hours per mile. As a reminder, when I tested it, it's about 330 or more watt hours per mile without a camper as you're driving 70 miles an hour down a turnpike or an interstate. So I did a little better than I expected. I expected to lose about half my range and it's actually even a little bit less than half my range that I lost. If you drive 55, 60 miles an hour, you can get it even lower. But it's I think it's a combination of the weight that you're pulling and the wind resistance. I'm thinking about getting a different camper for my Tesla that is about the same height and much lighter. This camper, again, was 2,000 pounds. So I'm going to cover day two and day three on my way down to Florida, stop in Jupiter at a friend's house, and then I'm going to continue on to Key West, do some boondocking down there. So if you want to follow my journey, like, subscribe, and more to come. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get to post day two. Thanks for watching all the way to the end.